When my symptoms began, every smell, every touch, every feeling was heightened and purely frightening. This impact took place in my mind like, I, like a wall came down. It's like I'd rejected my thoughts and my feelings and uh, it's like the right half of my awareness had vanished. I remember feeling very detached to, to the world. The person in the mirror was always a bad person. I, I, I saw myself as a monster. Pain equaled some kind of relief. And I remember going into mental hospitals and institutions I was in and out of juvenile systems and jails. I didn't want to take medication. I was afraid it might, I didn't know what it would do. Moreover, I didn't want to admit that I had a mental illness. How do I explain to my parents that I have depression and PTSD? We didn't even have words that describe those conditions in all languages. It was the prognosis of my illness. We're, we're, we're only going to get chronically worse that we could not experience recovery. Those were the messages that crippled me. When I lived in those feelings and I didn't feel there was any way out other than self-medicating, that's a lonely feeling. That's a desperate feeling. But that's a feeling that you get because you don't know there's another side. And because our society so isolates you and our, your own attitude towards your illness so isolates you. It was finally when I was connected with someone that asked me about what happened to me that I really began to have a, a different understanding of who I was. For another human to say, yeah, I don't care what they're saying about you. I don't, you know, I know you. And I believe in you still. The family is the long-term source of support. Even if people can't live at home and they live in a group home situation, the fact that there's an active family and an involved family and a loving family makes a very big difference in a person's recovery. The biggest change in this field is when we came to embrace the concept of recovery. The Community Mental Health Center concept was more than just getting treated for the illness. It was an evolution in the, in the thought process that for people to recover, they needed to have work, safe housing, social supports, peer supports. We don't need more stigmatization. We need open arms. And community behavioral health is a place where people can begin to reconnect. I take everything that has happened to me now as an opportunity to be a service to somebody. So that's why peer support and, and one, one person who's gone through something helping another person who's presently going through it is without parallel. We have a lived experience and we can and do recover. And if you can hang on and you get to the other side of it, you are usually transformed. We have people living in community, people in recovery, people finding their voice, our job now is how to give people the supports they need, no matter what their disability might be. They deserve the chance that we want for our own family members.